Hi everyone, Jessica here from the Healing Hands Duo. I really wanted to come on here because there's something I wanna to bring to everybody's attention that I am very concerned about. I had told you guys in my last video that was uploaded that I was going to be discussing, uh, if you guys watched that video on YouTube, at the end there, I said I was gonna be discussing what was found in pretend, potentially this thing that's going around as well as these things. And I never really got around to it. And the reason for that was because I didn't find a lot of solid evidence to suggest that what was being said in that particular video that I asked everybody to watch, that that was in fact in those things. So however, I kind of got off topic with that. I've been really busy. But the thing that I specifically, the reason why I specifically jumped on here today as well as yesterday is because I've been away from the internet for probably well over a month now because I was just fed up with dealing with everything that's going on in the world and I wanted to really dive back into my work and my work has always been in health and wellness and kind of like coaching people and mentoring people back to optimal health but since my husband and I struggled with multiple viral bacterial parasitic infections for many many years because we had Lyme disease uh, both of us were diagnosed with autoimmune conditions I was diagnosed with the worst kind of ulcerative colitis at first it was pan colitis but then it actually got worse and it became Crohn's colitis and my husband actually at one point was losing his vision, his mobility, some speech, and they said that he was uh, being diagnosed with pre-multiple sclerosis. By the way, both, both of us, as you can see today, I'm doing well, my husband's doing well. He was told maybe eight or nine years ago that you know we should prepare, he would probably be completely debilitated and in a wheelchair. That never occurred because we started to take our lives into our own hands and we really turned our lives around, uh, not only through diet or exercise, but we started to dive very deep into things like electromedicine, ozone therapies, light therapies, the importance of changing your electrical environment. That's why my husband became an EMF specialist. Uh, the importance of doing daily detoxification, light daily detoxification, and doing yearly detoxification, at least one to two times a year, doing a more of a full body cleanse. So and how to use things like, you know, anti natural antimicrobials, binders, and stuff like that. So I have been doing this now since 2018, and then everything happened in the world, and I've still continued to do this. I'm doing this work, obviously this is my job, but I started to really get away from my roots in the sense that all I was doing was doing research into that particular thing that was out there and then this like a lot of people anyway so anyway i the last month or two i decided enough was enough i wasn't going to give these beings any more of my time so i started kind of getting back into my own work and lo and behold my husband is working outside doing a lot of work outside right now and somebody comes up and says to him that did we know that they were aerial spraying Mississauga? So if you watch my last video, I was saying that Mississauga is probably one of the worst places to be right now because not only are they going live, fully live with 5G, and my husband's getting tons and tons of high radiation readings uh, because of the infrastructure that went up for, they say, for the telecommunications industry, which we all know knows this is for the blockchain and for the digital quantum AI technology that's coming in. But now they have also decided that, again, I live in Mississauga. Uh, I have seen gypsy moth issues outside of the city. However, I've never seen a problem with the gypsy moths here in Mississauga. Maybe that's because they've been spraying us this entire time, but I highly doubt it because apparently a bunch of people in my area or in and around Mississauga got letters to their house as well as a friend of mine was saying that, I think she was saying she saw an ad while she was waiting for the bus or something like that, saying that, you know, be prepared because they're going to be spraying with um, a particular insecticide. So of course, my husband and I, having dealt with Lyme disease and toxicity, because we think a lot of the reasons why people even are even susceptible to infections in the first place is because there are these imbalances in your life as well as a lot of toxicities. Like when it came down to it, 
we had multiple parasitic infections, multiple bacteria, bacterial infections. We didn't have any contracted viruses, but we had reactivated retroviruses that started to bother us again that were already within our bodies. I've talked about this before. And then we also had multiple other toxicities, like we had mercury toxicity, aluminum toxicity. My, my husband was having problems with copper at one point, various different things like that glyphosate, um, PFOA, BPAs, like all these things. So we spent many, many, many years doing advanced electromedicine, infrared saunas, light therapy, pulsed light therapy, because that does a lot of things for neural synapses and uh, new neural reconnections and stuff like that. For my husband, who was having all these neurological problems because of the so-called MS, which was an MS, turns out he had an infected tooth and it was harboring really deadly bacteria from a root canal. So we talk about this on YouTube and how deadly dental work in itself can be. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out on YouTube. Or if I put this on YouTube, I'll just link it above. Anyway, my point being though, is that given what's happening in the world right now, now we have the threat of the radiation. You'll find that in that other video, which I hope to have posted today, but You'll see that my husband did uh, radiation readings. In the last video I posted, I talked about how he had done these radi radiation readings and they were like through the roof. Like he wants radiation readings to be at like 10 and they were at like 49,000 in the city of Mississauga here in Ontario, Canada. But now, they, like I was saying, I was talking about the gypsy moths. They're spraying, they're aerial spraying Mississauga. So they are using what is called, they're using the insecticide that is called 4A48B, okay? So I put this out to my Telegram group because my husband and I try to pull up this insecticide because I live beside a golf course. I'm already getting sprayed because of the bloody golf course and I know how detrimental pesticides, herbicides and insecticides and genetically modified stuff and bacteria and you know, uh, GMO insects and rodents and all that are and how detrimental these are not only to our health but to the environment so I was very concerned because I was like what the hell they're like spraying us with this stuff now not that we, that we haven't been sprayed with chemtrails for years but anyway the fact that they're coming out and being so open about it and that there's these flyers everywhere had me concerned. It was almost like they were trying to cover their butts just in case people started to get sick. That's what I was thinking. So anyway, I put it out there. My husband tried to pull up the, um, the data sheets for the chemical composition of this particular insecticide. Of the insecticide, the 12% that they disclose is a particular bacteria. Um, and that they'll disclose. They'll disclose like the, the 12 to 15%, I think my husband was saying, of what this bacteria is. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video right here because I want to go over this bacteria specifically because I like the way that they use various different terminologies because there are a lot of websites that I look up and they say that this is completely organic. It's a soil-based bacterium that they're using. They've been using it for about 30 years. It has no effect on humans, birds, fish, other animals or mammals or anything like that. So this particular bacteria, they call it Bacillus, uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to botch this name, Thuringiensis BT. So they're saying, however, that there are over 400 registered formulations for this thing. I'm reading a, a, a document here that is called Differential Side Effects of Bacillus Thermogenesis, I can't pronounce that word, Bioinsecticide on Non-Target uh, Drosophila Flies. But that's not what I'm concerned about. What I'm concerned about is that the, it's again, it's that I believe our, our science is flawed. And that's what my husband's getting at. We believe the science is flawed because again, we are not, if we've been spraying with this insecticide, this biological insecticide for 30 years, and we're still having this problem, obviously this is not fixing our problem. So again, what my husband was saying, cause we're getting a lot of flack on this last video, on our Instagram channel is that we are again, it, this is science just covering things up as in the same case that they do this with conventional medicine. They just cover up the symptom. We wanna know why the gypsy moth is uh, reproducing or eating you know, trees and you know, taking out entire species of trees across Canada out of control. N no insect, nothing that is put here on this planet 
Nothing that is God-givenly put here on this planet is going to react this way. So there's something that is wrong with the physiology of these moths. That is our point with the electromagnetic frequencies. And when people are saying, oh, I've been watching this for the last 30 years, this is, you're just making a, you're connecting this back to something. Yeah, well, we've also had the electrical grid and it's been a problem since they really kind of started to introduce a lot of Wi-Fi and a lot of computers and things of that nature, right? So anyway, my point being is that I'm going through this article here and guys, this doesn't sound great because I could see how they could get away with using this. And, and again, I'm, this is just conjecture, right? We're putting it out there, but they're saying this is completely organic because it's non-toxic. But this is what this article actually says. It says BTVAR. And this is the one that they're using apparently because I have it on the pamphlet. It's called K-U-R-S-T-A-K-I. So B-T-K is used mainly against lipidopeterian larva. Shh, I can't say that produces five cry toxins. So it produces cry 1AA, cry 1AB, cry 1AC, cry 2AA, and cry 2AB. Even though they told us that this is like basically non-toxic, but yet it says right here that yes, the soil bacteria itself is non-toxic, but when introduced into these insects, it creates these toxins from what I can see through using enzymes. This is even more concerning to me than I originally thought because, you know, over the years dealing with Lyme disease and dealing with clients and stuff like that, one of the biggest and the hardest things to get out of the body, even beyond getting rid of like the toxins, like glyphosate, I know as, as bad as it is, it's actually easier to kind of bind to glyphosate and get that out of the body PFOA, same things, BPA, same thing. But the biggest and the hardest thing that I've noticed with people trying to remove from the body are spore-based pathogens. So like molds and bacteria that perform, uh, that actually produce spores. So then this is where I see the next part becomes a, a concern to me because it starts getting into like crystal structures and stuff like that. It says, the bioinsecticide formulations based on is based on spores and toxic, not sorry, toxin crystals of BTK and BTI are the most sprayed in organic and conventional farming and in natural areas, example, forests and swamps. It is generally accepted that once ingested by insect larvae, the toxin crystals are dissolved by the mid-gut alkaline pH, releasing a 130 KDA protoxins that are then processed by the digestive prote proteases, so that's a digestive enzyme, into smaller soluble active toxin fragments of 60 to 70 KDA. Active toxins bind to specific receptors of the mid-gut epithelial cells. Again, even with the situation that's happening in the world right now, there's inflammation on the epithelial cells happening. So now these are attacking the the gut epithelial cells of these insects, they say, it won't happen to humans. I just can't imagine how the, all of these uh, chemical reactions are not happening in humans caught, that would eventually lead to something like leaky gut. Eliciting sorry, pores formations in the cell membrane, so basically creating holes in the insect's gut, right? Cell lysis and gut epithelium disorganization is what it causes. This allows the gut bacteria, including BT, to colonize and leads to a rapid septicemia and then death. So it basically like goes into the gut, is digested by the gut microbiome and as well as the enzymes of the, the mid gut. And then it actually creates the toxin inside the insect. So yes, they could say that it's non-toxic and it's not a chemical per se, but it's a spore-based bacteria that creates toxins inside the insect that leads to these permeable, well, I guess permeability, or even it says here pores, so it like opens up these pores, which in my mind that in humans, that's leaky gut. And then it creates a sepsis in these guts and they die from the sepsis. Does anybody else think it's really weird that gut diseases are at an all-time high, like they are at the highest they've ever been in the last 30 to 40 years. 
again, I know they're saying that it's completely safe, guys. This is just what me and my husband are thinking because, you know, people who have been living. And then not only that, for the guy to come out and say to my husband, oh, yeah, there is some concerns that this will affect the immunocompromise. Well, there's somebody on our Instagram right now that put out the comment that, you know, they removed 500 trees. And I'm like, so now we're going to replace pe the safety of people for trees? Like, I'm not saying that I don't think we need to pay attention to the trees. We definitely need the trees. But, you know, the insecticide is not working, obviously, because we've been spraying it for 30 years. So obviously it's not working. And not only that, you know, certain types of things are on the rise. And I know they're saying that it doesn't affect humans, but maybe it doesn't affect humans when you spray it like once or twice. But if you're continuously spraying this thing and introducing it into the lungs or the gut, which we know in the, in the insect, what it does is it creates these large pores leading to sepsis and death. But these are tiny little insects. What happens when you continuously do this and introduce this into the human body? Honestly, it's just not adding up. Anyway, I'm going to read the rest of this off. I'm going to post this down below. You guys could go ahead and you can read it yourself because I think that's the thing. You don't want to look at 4A48B because you're not going to find this stuff. You actually want to look at the effects of Bacillus thermogenesis, the bioinsecticide, on the effects that it has, you know, on humans or in the environment. Now, that's the other thing. Like somebody else made a really good comment on Instagram that, you know, that's fine and all that's, you know, they're trying to target the gypsy moth. But I know that a few years back, my mom lives in protected on protected land um, in the Niagara Escarpment. They would not spray overhead in that area because they were saying that it would really disrupt the ecosystem. So this is not only targeting gypsy moths. I know they said that this wouldn't affect the pollinators. I don't know how it doesn't affect the pollinators, but I'm assuming it's going to affect other insects that are important to our environment, that are important to the ecosystem of our forests. So again, if somebody can show me some like clear cut data where this has actually been ingested by humans for like a long period of time, like I'm talking 10 years, because that's what, you know, reasonable studies are done for like 10 years and that this didn't create any ill effect in humans or, you know, the immunocompromise, which this guy told us that it does. So, you know, and you have to think, not just immunocompromise, this is anybody that doesn't have a fully developed immune system. We're talking infants, we're talking babies, we're talking the elderly, we're talking, you know, potentially other mammals. <laughs> Guys, I don't know. It To me, if somebody could provide something else, again, my husband and I are totally open to hearing it, to listening to it, to reading it, but it just doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense. Oh my God. Okay. I went through this a little bit more. I had to add this in here because the part where they told us all that you would only have to stay out, like you could be out, they, to, to not be outside for that half an hour before and after spraying. So this clearly states here, and this is what I said to somebody. I said, what happens when this stuff is like all over everything after and like say you're going to take your kids to the park and they're going to be going down the slide and you know kids put their their hands everywhere and put their hands in their mouth all the time so it says here data also show that almost all of the applied btk formulation dose was still present on the leaves surface 72 hours after spraying its amount returning close to en environmental levels only after 28 days after treatment. So they're telling us that th somebody had told my husband that this dissipates within literally hours after being sprayed because it just disappears basically under the sun. It's disintegrated, it's under the sun. So now we're finding out that majority of it's still there 72 hours later and that they can still find high levels of this particular bacteria 28 days after spraying. So if they spray us now, they spray everything now, they're going to have an influx of these spore-based bacteria in our environment that we don't really know what it does to the epithelial cells and what it does once it's digested by enzymes in our guts for 28 days after they've sprayed everything. So that's basically our... In, like. So if they spray now, that'll be, that'll take us basically to mid-June. And if they spray in mid-June, that'll take us to mid-July. 
So it says, I'm just going to go on. What does it say here? Finally, BT spores can survive in the soil and on different spore, uh, support, sorry, on different supports for months. Oh my God. And even years after application. So everybody who, you know what, at this point, I'm going to call them again because I want them to read this because they told us days. It would be gone in days. My husband's going to be outside all day, all night, like almost into the evening, basically in vegetation all the time. And this stuff can last months to even years. And who's going to, and if it does have a side effect, when are we going to find out about this? Is it going to be the same situation like asbestos in Agent Orange where we find out about this like 30 years later, that this is a problem? Because people are saying, oh yeah, well, it's been in, it's been in circulation now for 30 years. Well, yeah, gut diseases, which are classified as Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac disease, uh, gut dysbiosis, diet, chronic diarrhea, chronic constipation, like all these other things, sepsis, autoimmune conditions, rheumatic arthritis and stuff like that that are all based out of the gut. How do we know it's not being caused by this? How do we know? Like, is there any proof? Like, I want to see at this point, I want to see proof. And when they expose the BT toxin to human cells in a Petri dish, it poked holes in those cells, the exact same holes that it creates in insects. So we're eating the BT toxin. In Canada, they took blood that was preserved and found BT toxin was in the blood of 93% of the pregnant women tested. And in 80% of the cord blood, which means it was in the unborn fetus. The BT toxin is toxic to red blood cells. Oh, that sounds healthy. So I'm like, well, I said to him, okay, so you know what the 12% is, is this particular bacteria. So here I am thinking in my mind, okay, what do I need to do? That's an antimicrobial to kill this stuff in my body and to basically spray my whole area outside and inside my house. So to this morning when I woke up right away, I started to pull out the hydrogen peroxide. I talk about this in my book. Um, you can do things for upper respiratory infections that involve hydrogen peroxide. I'm not going to talk about that too much here, but I like to put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, even in my essential oil diffusers, I would like do probably a little bit less than half and then mix it with filtered structured water. And then I'll put things in there like peppermint and cloves and stuff like that, because naturally peppermint and cloves, I use a thieves oil is a natural antibacterial. So I started I got all of those going today, but I also started thinking, and that's why I did my telegram voice message yesterday, because I really wanted people to start preparing with binders because binders is just a great way to help you to detoxify. So like I take, personally, I take a lot of binders and I do them daily because you're constantly been being bombarded by toxins. But for instance, I will always keep activated or coconut activated charcoal on hand and again, these are all of my bio guys. You can check them out. The one that I use is actually from Bulletproof. I have a, a link from Bulletproof through my coffee and tea section. So if you go there and you go to the Bulletproof, you'll, he, they carry a really good um, activated charcoal. This one I don't have, but I do always keep bentonite clay on hand. Bentonite clay is a really great one because it can be used in a bath. It can be used topically on your skin if you have an infection on your skin to, to draw out impurities. I actually do bentonite clay on my face at least once a week. Um, but you can also ingest this internally. That one's really good because that one tends to pick up on a lot of uh, mycotoxins and stuff like that. So I always like to have one that's really good at bowel cleansing, which in this case, I would say the two best for bowel cleansing would be bentonite clay or liquid zeolites. The only way a zeolite can get small enough to get into doing um, intercellular detoxification is if it's been put into a nano-sized particulate, and then that way it can get into uh, the cells in order to detoxify the cells for things like heavy metals. So if you go to Touchstone Essentials, they have both options. They have a liquid zeolites and they have the lights and the spray zeolites. I personally take both of those. And then the other uh, really good one 
for pesticides and herbicides. Like this one's really, really good. This binder is really, really good. It's not just a binder. It does tons of different things. And I think I've got a post on Instagram where you can read through all the stuff. But if you go through my bio, through Optimally Organic, it's called fulvic humic acid or fulvic acid. Fulvic acid is actually really great at inter or intercellular, pulling out intercellular toxicities, but it's really good at removing things like uh, herbicides and pesticides from the body. Well, specifically in this case, it's been mentioned that it's really good at binding to glyphosate. So guys, not all binders are made equal. The reason why I recommend these particular companies that are in my bio is because I've done years and years of research. And when you're taking certain things like zeolites or clays or fulvic acid, because these substances come from the earth, uh, either they come from peat moss or volcanic ash or clays from the earth, you got to be sure that they're coming from a really reputable source and a clean source. Otherwise, what can end up happening is you can actually end up ingesting more toxins because our earth naturally has like, you know, natural toxins in it, obviously, like aluminum and like glyphosate and all these other things that they're spraying the world with. Right. So again, always choose a binder. The best thing to do is to stick to doing an intercellular binder and a binder that's really good in the gut. So the two gut ones I would say are liquid zeolites and bentonite clay. And then the intercellular, really good ones for intercellular work. Well, I think the only, uh, sorry, the two intercellular work is spray zeolites or fulvic acid. I would always take one, I would take one of those at the same time and I would be taking those consistently. The only one that you can only take, I would say you can only take acutely is probably activated charcoal. So I always have activated charcoal on hand because activated charcoal is when you suspect that you've been poisoned. But activated charcoal is good for poisoning, acute poisonings. Activated charcoal is really good for absorbing gas and distension. So if you're burping a lot or whatever, uh, activated charcoal is really good to take after being, if you, if you suspect you've been exposed to like a food pathogen, so you have food poisoning, something, or if you know you drank something, alcohol for instance, and you have a hangover, it's good for that. Any acute poisoning. Open. Another reason why I've been kind of off the internet is because I'm working on a ton of protocols right now. So one of them will be a full body cleanse and parasitic cleanse, which I hope to have up by hopefully next month. The one that I'm working on right now is for optimal gut health. So I'm working on that and that will be uploaded hopefully to my website by the end of this month. It's 4A, F-O-R-A-Y 48B. So like I said, my husband was able to find what the chemical composition was. Well, wasn't able to find it because they would only release what 12% of the chemical composition was, which was this active bacterial component to this insecticide. However, we wanted to know what the other chemicals were in this product and nowhere can we find it. We have no idea what kind of heavy metals are in this, this particular product. We have no idea what chemicals they're using. Like there's no way of us even knowing, like we wanted to know because my husband's working outside and I wanted to know which binders I should use to start pulling this stuff out of our body. But of course they're saying it's proprietary, proprietary. And I think to myself, oh, it's proprietary. Is it proprietary? but yet you're spraying my entire city and you're spraying my body and you're spraying my property with it, but it's proprietary. Well, how could it be proprietary if you're gonna put it into my body? So started, put this out on Telegram yesterday and got a few people who immediately wrote back saying they actually got this and I'll read it. So first of all, I'll, I haven't read this one yet, but it says that the symptoms, so, Somebody was able to pull up PubMed on this particular insecticide and it said symptom complaints following aerial spraying with biological insecticide 4A48B. So this was on PubMed and it says aerial spraying with 48 with 4A48B is associated with some adverse health consequences in terms of <laughs> some. Okay? Listen to the the adverse health consequences, which is really funny because if the government was really concerned about the other thing that's going on that causes upper respiratory infections. Don't you think that maybe they would find a better way to get rid of these gypsy moths rather than spraying the entire city? And potentially like you're gonna, the cities are gonna be affected beside us too because of the overspray, right? So it says here, aerial spraying with 4A48B is associated with some adverse health consequences in terms of significant increase. It says here, significant increases in upper respiratory airway uh, ailments, 
gastrointestinal issues, and neuropsychiatric symptoms. Guys, aren't those like all the things that they say is what the other thing is doing? And I'm not saying that that's what this is, but I know another friend said that last year she was somewhere and they said that they were spraying for the gypsy moths and she had she was out with her kids and they were in a park and there were guys doing this on a, a few select trees and they said, oh, you know what? We just sprayed those trees. Don't go anywhere near that section with your kids. But now they're spraying this stuff from the sky. So, and, and then it says, so say a bunch of people get sick here in the next couple of weeks to months with gastrointestinal problems, neuropsychiatric problems, or have upper respiratory infections. Are they going to say, oh, you know what? It was probably that spray that we sprayed all over you guys back in May and June. So if people should start getting sick, guys, is it the other thing? Or could it be this? So I just want people to keep that in the back of their mind if they should see a bunch of people getting sick here, specifically in and around uh, Mississauga. Another thing is, this is this one takes the cake too. A purse, one of the one of the people on my Telegram were so kind to send this to me because Okay, so they get this flyer in this in the mail and it says it's two applications with seven to ten days apart depending on the weather. The spraying will take place on the second days between May 15th and the and June 12th at around 5 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Of course, they didn't include on the flyer the steps to prepare for the poisoning. However, it did state in this flyer, before the spray, residents should close all windows, turn off your fans or air conditioners, or select the recirculate setting, bringing in all laundry and toys from outside, cover all your vegetable and herb gardens outside, and the soil that you're going to be growing your stuff in. Keep pets indoors, like, how are you gonna keep your pets indoors if they go to the washroom outside? Cover your pools, barbecues, play equipment, lawn furniture, and automobiles. Like, great time to do this too when everybody already uncovered all of their stuff. After the spray, residents should, listen to this, basically, they're basically suggesting that you go outside and wash outside, okay? So it says, wash and rinse pool covers, barbecues, play equipment, lawn furniture, and your automobiles with water. So go outside and wash everything. Practice good personal and food hygiene for the next several days. Example, hand washing after going outside or doing any outdoor activities, especially after gardening. Leave outdoor shoes at the door, washing all fruits and vegetables before eating or cooking, and wash your pet's paws before entering the home. So like now you can't even go outside. You gotta go outside these people are nuts. The more that we sanitize this world, the worse people get. Like, you know, I don't know what people think. Like, people think what, wearing gloves and wearing these masks has made everybody more healthy. But, like, we are at an all-time high for almost every single disease that exists right now. There's a reason for that. And that's because we have destroyed... Actually, I'm talking about this. We've destroyed our guts. We've destroyed our microbiome, which is responsible for like 70 to 80% of our immune system. We've overly sanitized the world. And now we've decided to start re-inoculating or respraying new bacteria all over our environment while also hitting us with a ton of radiation, which there's tons of um, studies to already currently suggest that when you're in these high areas with high stress, it allows, uh, sorry, bacteria, parasites, and certain types of yeast and molds to proliferate and grow rapidly and out of control. You know, guys, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where to go with a lot of this stuff anymore. I just thought I'd share that with you guys so that everybody is aware of this because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not going to read this flyer. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not going to realize or even think twice about it when they see them starting to spray all of us. But I do want to make it very, very, very apparent if people start getting sick in the city, it's probably not the thing that everybody thinks it is. It's unbelievable. Like, it's unbelievable. Like my friend said, so they're telling us to go out there and wash all of our property, but she takes her kids to the park. Does that mean the government's going to send everybody out, send city people out to actually clean all the parks now? Probably not. And if this was the same spray that they were using last year for the gypsy moths and she was told not to let her kids go anywhere near it, why is it now okay to just spray 
the whole entire city with this stuff. Anyway, guys, just wanted to come on here. I wanted to warn everyone. I wanted people to be aware of this. Talk to you guys later. Bye.